If you started a statin today, how long would it take before it actually prevents your first heart attack? A week? A month? Six months? On average, for most people, it takes about one to two years before a statin shows its full benefit in preventing a first heart attack. That's based on large, long-term clinical trials. Sometimes it's sooner if your risk is very high, but it's definitely not overnight. This isn't like taking a painkiller for a headache and feeling better in an hour. Lowering cholesterol is a long game, and the benefits build up over time. Now, if you only came for that answer, you could click off now. But honestly, what I'm about to share with you next could be even more meaningful for your heart health than that one statistic. Because this video isn't just about statins, it's about cholesterol as a whole and how you can meaningfully bring it down before it causes any trouble. Whether you're on medication, thinking about it, or just trying to improve your numbers naturally, understanding your cholesterol is one of the most important steps you can take to protect your heart. I bring this video to you with no conflicts of interest. I have no investments in any drug companies or natural remedies. This is just my take on things as a consultant physician in the UK. Let's set the scene. Your family physician has asked you to come for a blood test to check your cholesterol and you oblige. A day or two later, you get a text message to say that the results are out. Unlike your exams in high school, this time you are wishing for a very low score. You tap the button and open the results. Most people see their blood test, look at the total cholesterol number and that's it. They either breathe a sigh of relief or panic and then they file the results away, never really understanding what those numbers mean. But cholesterol isn't one number. It's a collection of values that together tell the story of your artery health. Why does that story matter? Because cholesterol, over time, builds up in the walls of your arteries. It doesn't just float around harmlessly. It can form plaques, which narrow those vessels and make them stiffer. Eventually, those plaques can rupture. When that happens, your blood forms a clot right on top of it, blocking the artery completely. If that's in your heart, it's a heart attack. If it's in your brain, it's a stroke. But the good news is this. The earlier you act, the more you can change that story. So, let's break down your lipid profile, the part of your blood test that shows the different cholesterol components. Understanding this is key to knowing what to target. First is total cholesterol. This is simply the sum of all cholesterol types in your blood. It gives you a rough overview, but it's far too general to make decisions on its own. Think of it like knowing how many people are in a building without knowing whether they're there to help or to cause trouble. Next, LDL cholesterol, often called bad cholesterol. This is the main player in plaque formation. High LDL means more cholesterol is being deposited in your artery walls. Lowering LDL directly lowers your risk of heart disease and stroke. If I could only focus on one cholesterol number to prevent heart attacks, this would be it. Think of LDL as rust in your plumbing. The more rust that builds up, the more likely it is the pipes will clog completely. Then there's HDL cholesterol, the so-called good cholesterol. HDL helps remove LDL from your arteries and transport it back to the liver to be processed. Higher HDL has traditionally been linked to lower heart disease risk. But here's the catch. Artificially raising HDL with supplements or drugs hasn't consistently lowered heart attack rates. The protective effect seems to be more about how HDL functions naturally in your body than just the number itself. We also have triglycerides. These are a type of fat in your blood, usually linked to your last meal, but chronically high triglycerides can signal poor metabolic health, high sugar intake, excess calories, or poorly controlled diabetes. They're important because high triglycerides often travel with low HDL, creating a particularly harmful lipid pattern. Finally, non-HDL cholesterol. This is your total cholesterol minus your HDL. It includes LDL and all the other cholesterol types that can contribute to artery disease. Many experts consider non-HDL cholesterol to be an even better predictor of heart risk than LDL alone, especially if your triglycerides are high. Understanding these numbers is the first step. The second step is knowing how to improve them. 
Let's start with diet. Increasing your intake of soluble fiber can make a big difference to LDL levels. Foods like oats, beans, lentils, apples and carrots help trap cholesterol in your gut so it's excreted instead of absorbed. Swapping saturated fats, like those from fatty meats and butter, for unsaturated fats from olive oil, nuts, seeds and avocados can also lower LDL and raise HDL. Then there's the hidden culprit in many diets, trans fats. These are found in processed baked goods, fried fast food and certain margarines. They not only raise LDL but also lower HDL. The good news is that many countries have banned or restricted them but they still sneak into some foods, so check labels. Next, exercise. You don't need to run marathons, but 150 minutes of moderate activity a week, that's just 30 minutes a day, five days a week, can improve your lipid profile. Brisk walking, cycling, swimming, even dancing, they all help. Exercise lowers LDL, raises HDL, and improves how your body handles fats and sugars. Weight management is also huge. Losing just 5-10% to 10 of your body weight can significantly lower LDL and triglycerides and raise HDL. It doesn't have to be all at once. Even gradual, sustained loss makes a difference. And don't forget alcohol and smoking. Too much alcohol can raise triglycerides, and smoking lowers HDL while directly damaging your arteries. Quitting smoking is one of the fastest ways to improve HDL and reduce your risk of a heart attack. But sometimes, despite your best efforts, your cholesterol stays high or your risk of a heart attack is already significant because of other factors like age, diabetes, high blood pressure or family history. This is when medication becomes important. Statins are the most widely used cholesterol-lowering drugs. They work by blocking an enzyme in your liver that's involved in making cholesterol. That means less LDL is produced and more is cleared from your bloodstream. Over time, this slows plaque buildup and makes existing plaques more stable, less likely to rupture. The studies on statins are huge, hundreds of thousands of patients over decades, and they consistently show reduced risk of heart attack and stroke. Now, here's my take. Lifestyle is the foundation. It's always the starting point. But when your numbers and your risk remain high despite those efforts, medication is not a failure. It's an added layer of protection. You wouldn't refuse a seatbelt just because you're a safe driver, right? It's the same principle. So, how do you put all this into action? First, get your cholesterol checked. Know your numbers, and not just total cholesterol. Look at LDL, HDL, triglycerides, and non-HDL. Second, make the changes that have the biggest impact. More fibre, healthier fats, less sugar and processed food, regular activity, weight management, quitting smoking and moderating alcohol. Third, talk to your doctor about your overall cardiovascular risk, not just your cholesterol. I see so many videos online just focusing on statins and cholesterol. That is wrong. Doctors consider your age, blood pressure, smoking status, existing and past medical history and several other factors before recommending medication. Cholesterol is just one piece of the puzzle that makes the person and several other factors come into play when talking about cardiovascular health. If you do start a statin, remember that it's not an instant fix. It's a long-term investment in your artery health. The real benefit shows up over years, not days. And the earlier you start controlling your cholesterol, whether through lifestyle, medication, or both, the more years you give your heart without the threat of a blockage. Don't wait for symptoms, because often the first symptom of high cholesterol is the heart attack itself. Be proactive, know your numbers, make the changes, and protect your heart for decades to come. Subscribe if this has helped you and share it with someone taking their own tests soon.